Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon, everyone! And you know what happened last time? No more secrets! No more secrets! Yay! No more secret but surprises. Remember, <laughs> surprises are allowed, apparently. I mean, who doesn't love a good surprise? If it's done well, uh, which Rod doesn't do. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Alright, so if you haven't watched the last episode, click on the card on the top right and let's get to it. Emily and I emerged from Viorica's store after a two hour visit. Sebi, who is sitting on Emily's shoulder, huffs a sigh as we exit. Finally, I feel like I have had my cheeks pinched for hours. Emmeline laughs. It's because Viorica's cousins adore you. Sebi grumbles, but I can't help but smile. Viorica's child cousins were in the store today when we came to visit. Viorica has been watching them while their parents are on a vacation. I suspect that her cousins were a little easier to describe today because of because Sebi was with us. Emmeline and I were tr have been trying to make him take him more. Emmeline and I have been trying to take him more places with us lately. You enjoyed the attention. You just do not want to admit it. But my poor cheeks. Would you rather have been stuck in Rod's room? I could swear the plush shudders. I guess the kids aren't that bad. Emmeline pets Sebi's head as we make our way to the town plaza. Back when I was Emmeline's personal maid, I came to the town with her frequently. I didn't like going out then, but now I find these little excursions permissible, enjoyable even. Emmeline likes to show me stalls and treat me to her favorite baked goods. So far, my favorites are, my favorite are the candy and apples. If you go to Rod's route, not, not Rod's route, Waltz's route, that's what he treats the princess to, isn't it? Aww. Were they made for each other? Nah. <laughs> Am I gonna admit that Waltz's route is the true route? Never. Never. You'll never take me alive. And you'll never find me alive saying that. The... To my friend who's gonna watch this and tell me it's Waltz's root is the true root. Yeah, you loser. <laughs> Emmeline sighs wistfully. I love it when Verica's cousins came come to visit. They're adorable. I'm sure they enjoy your company as much as you enjoy theirs. Don't you find them endearing? I shrugged. Children are difficult for me to understand. When I was young, I distrusted most children my age because mother insisted they were trying to use me. I think they appreciate your honesty. Children usually do. Emmeline gives me a teasing smile. Someday, I think you'll make an excellent mother. I feel sudden, so suddenly I nearly trip over a passing merchant. What? I put a hand to my mouth, horrified that the word come out so high pitched. Oh, so it should have been a uh, what? <laughs> what? Like that? I put a hand to my mouth, horrified that the word came out comes out so high pitched. More than a few times, folk glance at me curiously. What? Did I say something wrong? I reach up to grab Emmeline's hand with a grumble, pulling her along with me. When I, find, when I finally pull out out of the crowds, Emmeline is laughing. I feel I fail to see how that was amusing. You are so ador adorable when you're embarrassed. I said I did not understand children. Sebi coughs. Hmm, Rod seems like he'd be mystified by children too. You don't give Rod enough credit. He is fiercely loyal to those he loves. Emmeline is smiling at me mischievously. I turn away with a sigh. I feel like I've fallen into a trap. 
No, no, please, go on. I love it when you and Rod gush about each other. You think someday they'll have a, ch a child to gush over? Both of you, stop, stop, stop talking. The last thing on my mind right now is children. The more I think about it, the more embarrassed I become. Emmeline must tell from my silence that I am un uncomfortable because she shifts the conversation to herself. Someday, I would like to have a family of my own. I look at her, curious. Last time, she was interested in a, another man. Varg. Right? But Varg does not belong to anyone. He's simply like the wind. He's like the wind! The masked man was, was myth accomplished. They're missing an S there. He disappeared after I broke my curse, and we still have been unable to uncover his identity. Emmeline was heartbroken. She really seemed to want to get to know Vark better. Since then, she hasn't seemed to connect with anyone else, at least not so far as I am aware. I know for a fact that you would be an amazing mother. Thank you, Lucette. Someday, someday, I hope I'll have the opportunity to have a family, but I'm in no rush. She shakes her head. Speaking of rushing, you and Rod have taken everything very slowly, haven't you? What, what do you mean? Emmeline laughs. Well, it took you a while to resolve the most recent issue. You make it sound like we were fighting when the problem was that Rod was being secretive. He truly is a special kind of stubborn. Just like you, princess, you two are almost one and the same. Savvy sighs dramatically. Welcome to my world, princess. Can you imagine what it was like to listen to an overthinker's thoughts, but know he isn't ever gonna speak them aloud? Rod is so overdramatic. You, re you really do know him best, don't you, Sebi? Of course. I think Sebi would be a relationship counselor. I would be an excellent counselor. The two of us share another laugh as we turn and head back to the palace. To the place. <gasps> Lucette, thanks again for accompanying me today. It was my pleasure. Emmeline taps Sebi on the head. Tap tap tap. Let's go return you to Rod's room, shall we? Back to the dungeon. Emmeline laughs. We'll see you later, Lucette. Good night, princess. On my way back to my room, I see father. He is heading for my door when he stops noticing me. Ah, oh, there you are, Lucette. How was today's outing? I eye him curiously. It is rare for him to seek me out. It was fine. Viorica's child cousins were visiting. Ah, Emmeline talks at length about how endearing she finds them. I suppose. Can you spare a few minutes, Lucette? My curiosity sharpens to weariness. Of course. Then shall we walk? He offers his arms his arm and I set my hand on the crook of his elbow. The two of us begin to wander in the corridors, which are thankfully quiet at this time of day. So I hear you and Rod have resolved things. Yes, finally. I glance at him. He told me he sought you out for advice. Father smiles. He looked he almost looks relieved. I'm glad he came to me for advice. I could tell something was amiss. I'm, gl I'm glad he spoke with you. It seemed to clear things up for him. It can be extremely difficult to discern one's feelings when it comes to love. It is a complicated thing. That's why it's so important to self-reflect on, uh, on your own feelings, but also your loved ones. Father pauses to look at me. It is good to see you smiling again, Lucette. 
I know this long distance relationship has been difficult for you, but if you have an, if you ever need advice, I know what it's like to court someone outside of a noble circle. You and Ophelia are an inspiration. My father laughs. I could say the same thing about you and Rod. You have sacrificed much to be here. I know Rod has, but have I? It is as if father can read my mind. He reaches out to cut my cheek. You have come a long, long way, you said. More than any of us, I believe. It is no easy thing, learning to trust after being taught not to rely on others. My father falters. I am sorry I could not teach you that sooner. Every day I dig I'm gratefully Every day I am grateful you decided to give me another chance to make things right between us. My heart twinges. Of course, I We both pause at the sound of footsteps. I expect a servant and I am surprised to see Rod instead. He looks just as surprised to see us. Am I interrupting something? Of course not. My father presses a brief kiss on top of my head. Good night, Lucette. Until next time. Loving father. You know, I have a father who does the same thing to me. He kisses my, me on my forehead and my or my head. And I think, and that's, that like highlights my day because I just feel so happy. Me. I'm just lucky to have a dad like him. Who can show affection. I know some people are, find it very hard to show affection. But I'm the type of person who loves affection and it should be shown. If it's not obvious, I'll be very sad. <laughs> I'll be de devastated. I'll be crushed. I'll be depressed. I just love affection too much and if you don't show me affection, how am I supposed to know that you love me? You know? That's why kisses on the hit from fathers are so good! It's so good! <sighs> good night, father. Father dips his head in Rod's direction before walking off. Walking off? Wow. Rod leans down to kiss my cheek as he approaches. My mom kisses me on my cheeks. So now Rod reminds me of my mom. Hello, mother. How you doing? I wonder what it feels like to be kissed by somebody outside of family. I'm not sure I really want to know. I don't really care as long as my family loves me. Family is more important than anything else. And then, unless the thing is me, I'm more important than my family. <laughs> yeah, I'm more important than my family. That's that's true. That's so true. And I I, it's not false or anything. I'm not. I'm not lying. Sometimes you gotta be first in line. But family is important too. And can I talk to things that are important to me? Because without family, what is love? There is no love without my family. Mi familia. How was the outing? It was pleasant. I gave him a look. What about your day? You've been resting, I hope. After we had that conversation or the, the other day, Rod and I discussed the necessity of taking breaks. I look him over now, relieved to see the dark circles under his eyes are faded, and that for the first time in a long time, he looks relaxed. I did. Mother tried to convince me to take the whole week off even. She said I ought to treat myself. He sighs. My birthday is one day. I don't need one whole week. 
What? I stare at him. It occurs to me that I have never celebrated Rod's birthday with him, and that he has never even mentioned it before. Rod looks taken aback. I shouldn't have mentioned it. I never do anything for my birthday. I don't... What do you want? I step towards him. Rod looks unnerved. I don't want anything. Having you is enough. Nonsense. Rod runs a hand through his hair and groans. You really don't have to get me at you don't you <sighs> You really don't need to get me anything, Lucette, but he blushes. I would love any gift you buy me. Anything? I cannot get him just anything. I have to make sure that this is the best birthday gift he has ever received. I'll come out with this with, I'll come out with something meaningful. I must. I must. Rod coughs awkwardly. Anyway, we were talking about you. How 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 were v Viorica and her cousins? It, it occurs to me that it has been a while since Rod visited her. Sometimes I think about how strange it was. It is that the reason he came to be here in the first place is because he wanted to impress her. So much has changed since then. All of us have found happiness in unexpected places. And people. I smile. They were well. Viorica is always so lively when the children are around. And Sebi was very good at distracting them while we all spoke. Rod snorts. Sebi is a good distraction. I look at him curious. Have you visited her recently? I have. M wouldn't stop pestering me until I did. He glances up at the night sky, and the moon illuminates the melancholy in his eyes. You're right, she is more lively. I'm happy for her and her, and her husband. Unthinkingly, I reach out to grab his hand. After a few moments, Rod leans on t into me. Strange, isn't it? How quickly time passes. Yorika has been married for a while now. I can feel his eyes on me. If we married someday, what kind of wedding would you want? I want a wedding with all the big, big cake and the big, big presents and all the guests of the kingdom come here. Yeah. <laughs> my, <laughs> my, my cheeks warm at his question. This is the first time he's ever mentioned marriage. Well, well, I think. Something simple is nice, eh. but elegance is so nice too. Ah, uh, what to choose, what to choose. Alia. Something elegant or something simple? Simple. Simple. Ah, uh, a girl after my own heart. My sister and I have the same thinking, even though I was having trouble. But I was leaning towards simple. Because. I don't know. My mother always. Uh, always chooses simplicity over everything else. So I guess. We all thought. Uh, we all choose simplicity over everything else. Unless it's the wrong answer. Then gosh. Dar darn it. Gosh gee wellikins. I don't even know how to spell that. Anyway, something simple. You know I dislike decadent celebrations. Something simple would be nice. Being with you is the important thing. Rod sighs. It's a relief to hear that. I'd do anything with you but elaborate celebration. But an elaborate celebration would be... I try to imagine him on some grand stage with a spotlight chained on him. Uncomfortable? To say it the least. A wedding is a celebration for two people, not one. I would never suggest something that would be uncomfortable 
that you would be uncomfortable with, but I look at him curious. Why do you ask? I wanted to know your preference. I've been thinking about the future a lot lately, so... He turns away, cheeks flushed. You're blushing. I... I I'm not? Rod turns his attention skywards again, a soft smile on his face. This may be strange to say, but I'm glad I was cursed. It's strange to think I wouldn't... It's strange to think that I wouldn't know you otherwise. Rod steps back and tilts my chin up. I'm... <sighs> I got embarrassed before reading. <laughs> Rod steps back and tilts my chin up. I look into his eyes, so bright in his dark, in this darkness, and smile. We wouldn't be here right now, like this. He trails his fingertips down my cheek until his thumb is brushing my lips. Oh jeez. Oh Jesus. Uh. Then he leans down and presses his lips into mine. They look so cute, but I get so embarrassed reading these because I read all of this in the living room so everyone can see. So. <laughs> At first, it is slow. Uh, it's a slow, sweet kiss. But then his hands travel down my back, drawing a shudder up my spine as he pulls me closer to deepen, deepen the kiss. It is a kiss I sink down into. A breathless kiss I never want to surface from. You'll drown. I mean, you'll suffocate. I think. When Rod finally pulls away, his cheeks are endearingly rosy. But the shock on his face. I have no doubt that my own face looks the same way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How the heck did I read that? <laughs> I'm gonna keep that in. I laugh. It's a good thing that the halls are so empty tonight. I susp suspiciously so. I hope no one was watching us. The thought makes me want to hide under my blankets forever. I shake my head. Do not apologize. That was very nice. Why are you looking at me like that? Rod clears his throat. N nothing. I'm glad you thought it was nice. The longer we stand there, the more awkward this becomes. Rod coughs. You should get some sleep. That is a good idea. I reach out and take his hand. He walks my me back to my room. We say our good nights before, but before parting for the night. I stare at the cakes lined for. The What's up with the clicking? <laughs> Sorry, if you can hear the clicking, my sister is playing Roblox currently. Uh, what are you playing? She's playing epic mini games on Roblox and she's spamming the click. So, yo, I hope y'all don't mind that. I stare at the cakes lined up for today's taste test. Ophelia decided to leave it up to Emily and I to choose the best cakes for the ball. So far, I have tasted three cakes, but I am unable to concentrate on the flavors. Why? Is it because of the, the kiss? You shouldn't be so embarrassed, young one. My mind is on the ball, which takes place in one week. And more importantly, Rod's birthday is in two days, and I have yet to come up with a gift idea. This chocolate mousse cake is the best so far. What do you think, Lucette? I nod as absently. Emmeline leans forward, squinting. What? You say that, but you haven't even tasted it yet. She gestured towards my fork, still half raised into my mouth. Sorry. What's on your mind? Rod's birthday. Oh, I just recently bought my gift for him. Why did he not mention it to me earlier? Why did no one mention it at all? I narrow my eyes at Emmeline, who raises her hand in surrender. I just remembered a few days ago. I always forget. 
Rat never likes to make a, a big deal of it. I'm surprised you know about it. <laughs> My reading is atrocious. I'm surprised you know about it. He brought it up accidentally to me. A million laughs. That sounds like him. So... She leans forward. Do you have any gift ideas? So when buying a gift, you have to have the, the person that you want to gift to in mind. So... Rod doesn't play with plushies anymore. Even though it's handmade, if it, if it doesn't... Uh, if they don't use it, then it's gonna be meaningless, right? So if we ask Emmeline, we'll have a good idea of what Rod would like, but... It's not our own idea, you know? They would know who thought about it. So, buying him something maybe? Do you know of anything that's sold in Anjali's market that he would like? Emmeline tilts her head as she thinks. This was a few years back, so I don't know if it's still around. But he was really obsessed with this old book that featured dances from all over around the world. I remember it was worth a fortune. I think there was only something like 5 copies around the world. It makes sense that Rod would be intrigued by a book about dance. He's extremely dedicated, after all. Gold is not an issue. I may as well, uh, I may as well go search for this book. <laughs> oh? Emily loves sheep sheepishly. Sorry, I know it's not much when we think about gold we have in the palace coffers, and yet, and yet Emily comes from a humble background. There is no reason for you to apologize. It is always better to be self-aware where gold is concerned. In this case though, I want to buy Rod something I know he will treasure. Maybe the plush was the right, I right idea after all. Like... It costs a lot. And it's not with our own money. You know, it's the palace's money. So we're giving... In, a plus would be giving him something that's from us while the book is just anyway he might not even want it anymore hmm, maybe I chose the wrong choice but let's move on we will see what uh, we will see what my, what kind of fruits my decisions will bear. I'll show you where the stalls are it's after we're done to the test, test tasting then. The two of us resume our testing. Later, Emmeline leads me to the antique st item stalls she was referring to. I can tell from the languages featured on this banner that it was, the merchant is well traveled. Even his item descriptions are in multiple languages. A traveling merchant. Good day, Princess Emmeline, and the merchant's eyes widen when he catches a sight of me. He bows a bright smile on his face. Princess Lucette, I am honored to meet you in person. How can I help you? There was an old book I saw here years ago, one about dancers from around the world. You don't happen to have it, do you? Oh, so you remember that book? My heart sinks. He's probably sold it. It's been two years after all. That is a very special item. I took it off my shelves a couple of years ago thinking I'll save it for a specialist, but... The merchant leans over to rummage through a large chest behind him. Is this what you're looking for? The man pulls out a large book with yellowed pages. The book is a treasure among scholars. I've traveled between kingdoms for years, offering them a chance to borrow it for their studies. Oh. Emmeline runs a careful hand from her to cover. To think that this book is that valuable. 
is it really alright to purchase this when there are renowned scholars seeking out? Seeking it out? The merchant smiles. Did you come over here for this book, Princess Oset? Because it would be my honor to give it for you for free. What? I stared at him baffled. No, this book is too valuable. Nothing could be ever so valuable as my daughter's life. I paused. Your daughter? Had the fairy tale curse. It endangered her life. And years ago, you saved her life. I have dispelled many fairy tale curses over the years. I rarely remember individual people, but the fact that I could save this girl's life warms my heart. It is good to know that I when but what I'm doing makes such a difference. I owe you a great debt, princess. Not at all. Dispelling the curses is my responsibility. The merchant shakes his head. Responsibility or not, you saved my daughter. And this is a small way for me to repay you. But the other scholars? Many have already written their research. I glance at Emmeline who looks at me helplessly. Are you sure you won't make payment for this? Never. The merchant laughs. For this purchase at least, but the next thing you come by, I will gladly accept gold. There will definitely be a next time. I agree. Thank you so much for your generosity. The merchant goes. Truly, it is my honor, princess. The day of Rod's birthday, I asked him to meet at our special meeting place. I turn when I hear rustling leaves. Did I keep you waiting long? I shake my head. Not at all. I hand Rod my wrapped gift. Happy birthday, Rod. Rod smiles. Lucette, you really shouldn't have. He takes the gift, eyes widening as he gently tears the wrap wrapping. This is... Rod's eyes are wide with wonder. I've been wanting to read this for years. How did you even know this existed? Emily might have mentioned it. The merchant still had the book. It had been taken off the shelves for a while. Rod looks at me almost guiltily. You don't have to buy me something so expensive. Actually, I shake my head. I'll tell you the story later. Suffice to say, I did not pay for that book with gold. It was offered to me, and now I'm gifting it to you. Rod raises his eyebrows. No magic involved? Not much, anyway. Rod's smile is wide and bright as he gently flips through the pages. He looks like a wonderstruck child. Thank you, Lucette. I can't be even begin to tell you how much this means to me. It was my pleasure. I hope you know that we're both going to practice some of these dances in here together. I laugh. There's nothing more I'd love. There's nothing I'd love more. The two of us make our way back to the palace. A small feast awaits us upon our return. Ophelia and Emmeline are full of smiles and laughter. Last year, they could not celebrate Rod's birthday with him, so they make the celebration as, min as merry as they can. Father and I excuse ourselves early so that Rod can enjoy the rest of the day with his mother and sister. Tomorrow is the night of the Grand Ball, and the palace is bustling with activity as the staff makes one last minute as the staff make last minute preparations. More than once, flustered servants nearly bumped into me as I'm walking back to my room. I've just gotten out of dance lessons with Rod and I'm eager to relax. I turn the corner and nearly run to someone else again. I'm so sorry! I step back with surprise. Emily? Oh, Lucette! Emily bends over, reaching for a piece of parchment that apparently fell into the floor during our near collision. I notice a familiar crest embedded to that leather stamp. A letter from Bergantia? I eye her curiously. Is that from Claude? Ah, uh, not exactly. I consider. The only other person who'd be writing to Emmeline is Prince Lance. Emmeline tells me they get along. I've only spoken with Lance a few times myself. I didn't know he wrote to Emmeline. Lance then? 
Um, Emmeline suddenly looks embarrassed. Guilty even. Is there something like you would like to tell me? She fidgets, suddenly looking very nervous. We could walk, talk in my room if you'd like. Yes, let's. I plop myself down on the bed just, and gesture Emmeline to sit beside me. So Prince Lance, do you write here to him often? Only about once a month. Is this a secret? Oh, not at all. I just figured no one would care Lance and I were discussing mundane things over letters. Mundane things like... Everything from palace life to history. Lance told me he wanted to learn more about Anjali when he visited, so he suggested exchanging letters. You remember when the Bergenshin royal family visited a year ago to thank you for dispelling Claude's curse? I do remember it was nearly a year after I dispelled Claude's curse. That was the last time he and his family visited, and when Claude first brought up the dance instructor position to Claude. So you have been exchanging letters for a while now. Emmeline laughs. Emmeline smiles sheepishly. Yes, it has never been a secret, but I'm sorry I didn't tell you earlier. No apologies necessary. You don't need to tell me everything, you know. I know, but you've been so honest with me. I will not say no details now, if you would like to share them. Emmeline has always been a good listener and great at giving advice. The least I can do is repay the favor. There's not much to share. Your face says otherwise. Emmeline puts her hands to her cheek with a sigh. I've already told you the gist of it, but recently Lance has mentioned he'd like to spend time together. He even mentioned... Courting you? Emmeline huffs a soft, nervous laugh. Not exactly in those words, but yes. He'll be here for tomorrow's ball, but I don't want to make... Well, I don't want him to ask father for permission then. Why not? It seems like a perfect opportunity as any. Because this fall is for you. And because Rod... She freezes. Because Rod what? It's nothing. Just ignore me. This wouldn't happen to be the surprise everyone keeps mentioning, would it? You'll see. Anyway, this celebration is for you and Rod. Whatever might happen between Nancy and I in the future, it can wait. You two waited after all. And now you finally get to have your happily ever after. Happily ever after? We still have problems to work out, but we are getting there, step by step. Uh, anyway, please don't tell Rod I mentioned anything. We're so close to the ball too. I will not say a word. Emmeline sighs with a relief. Thank you. So about Lance. <laughs> I love when Emmeline blushes. Have you told anyone about anyone else about this? Father obviously does not know. But what about Ophelia and Rod? I've told mother, but Rod I've been trying to find the right time. Rod can be um over very overprotective. One time, a suitor went, sent me flowers and Rod trailed him back to his home and bombarded him with questions. Isn't that harassment? He's always been that way. And he's, been, he's so stressed now, I'd rather not have him worry about my relationship with anyone. So I'm keeping it a secret for now. Like sister, like brother. But I wonder, is this the right thing to do? So, like brother, like sister. Like sister, like brother, but I wonder, is this the right thing to do? I mean, should I, tr I should trust Emmeline, right? Because she knows her brother. But... Keeping secrets is... Uh, I mean, we just talked a lot about keeping secrets and just surprises, only surprises allowed. Maybe convince her to tell him? I think that's the right way to go. I mean, trust is important, right? I think you should tell him. You think? Do 
not let our relationship stop you from pursuing yours. Rod would not want that. Besides, Rod stayed in Bagantia for a year. He knows Prince Lance. When he told me about his time in Bagantia, he even sounded like he respected him. Oh, that's a relief. Somebody make somebody some somebody make that into some kind of remix. <laughs> if you can, I mean, I don't have much viewers, but I'm very thankful for the ones who actually watch these. Emmeline looks thoughtful for a few moments as she considers. You're right. We're not children anymore. And truly, I'm terrible at keeping secrets anyway. I smile. I'm happy for you, Emmeline. Thank you. Regardless of when Lance asks the king for permission to court you, at least you'll get to see him tomorrow for the ball. And here I thought Emmeline was disinterested in all her suitors, but there was a man all this time she was interested in. It was a man. Emmeline flushes and nods. I'm looking forward to seeing him again. I grin and peppering him with questions to make sure he is worthy of you. Lucette, not you too. I laugh when Emmeline nudges my shoulder. The two of us continue speaking well into the night. Emmeline does not hint at what tomorrow surprise is, but I no longer wonder. Whatever it is, I am excited for it. Alright, be thrust. Be thrusted. Be thrusted. <laughs> chapter 5. Alright, that marks the end of today's chapter, today's episode. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited for the ball. I thought it was going to be this episode, but it's going to be the next episode. Sorry about that if I misled any of you. And, like, hmm, what's going to happen? I wonder what's going to happen. I mean, they already courted. The Rod already courted the princess, right? Or is that supposed to be the surprise? I don't know. What <laughs> I have no I have no clue what the surprise may be. But Emmeline and Lance, who would have thought? Who would have thought? Anyway. So comment down below what you think about this episode and tell me what you think will be the next episode. What will happen in the next episode? And do tell, give me suggestions of what games to play so I will not run out of games to play and I'll keep on having content for all of you. And like if you like, dislike if you dislike. Subscribe for more content like this. And I guess that's it. Thank you for watching and have a good day!